Hi everyone, welcome to this edition of West Island News. My name is Hannah Johnson and I'm joined by Jocelyn and Katerina. And they work for FedEx de l'Ouest de Lille, which is a very important organization on the West Island. We're going to speak about their programs, what they offer, and what an important resource this organization really is for West Islanders. Now, CADAC stands for Centre d'Aide et de Lutte contre les Agressions à Caractère Sexuel, and they exist all across Quebec. The aim of these centers is really to provide support to survivors of sexual violence and to educate and engage the community through preventative awareness trainings. Um, at the moment, they provide support to female survivors, and they are working on also including transgender and non-binary individuals as part of the uh, community that they will welcome. And specifically here at the West Island location, support groups are offered for victims of sexual violence, meetings and follow-ups, legal clinics to help them sort of navigate through legal uh, and judicial proceedings, as well as workshops to support the healing process for the victims. Now, uh, CADAX offers, like I mentioned, support groups. Yes. Where women can present their stories mm -hmm. in a safe space and be vulnerable and open about their experiences. Mm -hmm. How important would you say creating a safe space is for and a community for women as they recover from their traumas? Yes, I would say that it's very, very, very important because um, when a survivor enters like a support group, um, they are with strangers, right? Um, so for them to talk about something that they have often not talked about, uh, about something that is very, very personal to them and something that can even be like re-traumatizing for them talking about it. It's really important to create a safe space because we want them to be able to share. We want them to be able to feel heard and um, respected also. So it's really important that they feel, yeah, like I said, respected and everything like that. And they talk about things that, um, that are really personal. So that means that they are in a vulnerable state. And when they are in a vulnerable state, it's hard even to be in that state in the first place. But even like to talk about very personal things can be, um, it can be difficult for them. So then um, it's, it's really important that that person feels safe in that vulnerable state. And then what that means is, is like if one person in the groups make like a disrespectful comment or um, makes whatever is disrespectful make a harmful comment um, it can change the whole dynamic of the group and that is very essential like in the support group um, because if they don't feel safe if the survivors don't feel safe in the support groups well they probably won't share as much as they would like to they won't they won't share like much details not that is important but Sometimes some people like to share details and then if they don't feel safe, they won't share details. Um, and they won't like make feedbacks and things like that to other survivors. Um, so it really can change the dynamic of the group and they can close up to themselves, like close their shells, if I can say. Um, so that's something that can happen if like even just one person in the groups make a harmful comment. Uh, that make other survivors not feel safe in the group. So it's really, it's really important to create, again, a safe space in the group uh, because we want everyone to feel heard, seen, and respected. Um, so that would be like the first part of the answer. And the, the part about the community, uh, the part that also is a very important part, again, um, because in the community, we have feelings of like trust, bonding, and respect and complicity. So these things are also very important when you have to talk about personal things again. Um, and like when the when survivors feel like with, with each other in the group that others have their back and that they feel like they can be trust and not a word would get out of the group, they will likely share more and they will give other survivors a more positive feedback um, and sometimes, yeah, things, things like that. So it's really right. important. Survivors are talking about something very personal. So that means that they are in a vulnerable uh, state. So to be in that state for them, it can be very hard to be in that state. And it can be hard also for the survivors to show other people that 
they are in that state and they are being vulnerable and to open it to someone else like i said it can be very difficult and honestly that step to be in a vulnerable state and show it to other people it's really a big spot uh, a big step in their healing process and it's also really important to let yourself as a survivor let yourself be in that vulnerable state because that's where the magic happens if you have anything you wanted to share i think She's pretty much covered it. No, she definitely covered <laughs> right. it all. I agree with everything she said. It's extremely important to always have a constant safe space and a sense of community when you're opening up about traumatic experiences. And to really, it's what makes the, the healing process beautiful as well, to create those mm-hmm. connections between the individuals. So, right. yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, another um, program that you also offer is a, a legal clinic to assist women through judicial processes, mm-hmm. it, and if they wish to fill out an application form for an a, uh, IBAC, if they are victims of a criminal infraction, mm-hmm. um, how are domestic or sexual violence cases typically received within the judicial system? Mm-hmm. Now, uh, it really depends on the situation. However, what we often see is that it won't go further than a complaint. Often it will get stuck in the investigation part of it for years on end before it even goes to the next step. And more often than not, it will be dismissed. Um, Often we see for lack of evidence. Um, Now we know that only 6%, for example, of sexual violence cases are reported to the police, only 6% of them. So it's already a very small amount that are reported, even less so and a, a small amount that are actually convicted and prosecuted. So yeah, we it depends on the cases, but uh, I would say that it's not received very well. Um, it's hard, it, it's also very hard for the survivors as well, because it can be very traumatizing to have to go through every detail of the traumatic experience that you had, only for at the end of the day, for it to be dismissed for lack of evidence to say, okay you experience this but it's not enough for us to take action so goodbye you know right. uh, it could be hard to have faith and to believe in a system that isn't built to support survivors so it could be very hard and very traumatizing for them as well right of course yeah and um a lot of the times we also hear of uh sexual violence in the workplace and in educational institutions mm-hmm. which can be i'm sure particularly damaging for um, people's careers and their uh, mm-hmm. scholastic experiences. Would you say that um, workplaces and educational institutions have improved their policies or consequences for sexual violence in the workplace? I think that I'd say in the last decade, there definitely has been some improvement. Um, I know, like, for example, if we think of ICAM, they did build like um, an informational video that you have to do at the beginning of each semester on sexual violences in the workplace, harassment, etc. And many CJEPs and other universities have also adapted it. And it's like an obligatory thing that you need to do to be informed and educated. Um, and I do think I have seen that more workplaces <clears throat> will have trainings, conferences, you know. Um, but honestly, when it comes to the consequences, um, We'd like to think and assume that there has been an improvement, but we can't toss it aside or not acknowledge the fact that often it will be swept under the rug as well. I think it's always necessary to strive for better work conditions and for safer environments for everyone because it's a situation that involves everyone. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes they say that they will do like, they will do something, they will Mm -hmm. do trainings and often like well because of lack of time we will Mm -hmm. not do it so that often happens also so yeah right yeah yeah i think it's important that they make it a priority and not just you know an afterthought Mm -hmm. yes it makes it to be very upfront and Mm -hmm. definitely a priority exactly Mm -hmm. um now on a personal scale let's say that somebody um knows someone in their family or a loved one who has experienced um an experience with sexual violence Mm -hmm or is uh, still traumatized from any sort of form of sexual violence, Mm -hmm. what is the best way that the loved ones or somebody supporting that person can sort of best help and advocate for them? Mm -hmm. Honestly, be present. Listen to them, validate them, respect their choice, you know, whether it be to report or not, because every healing journey is different and the needs for the survivors are different depending on the situation. So, you know, sometimes like 
people try to encourage to report and and I'm out or to not report and honestly it's a personal choice and everyone has their own path to take and so at the end of the day you have to just be there for them accompany them in the process if they ask you if they need the help and truthfully be respectful and uh, never stay quiet always be active you know even on social media and uh, just like as an activist in general I think that's also very important as well Mm -hmm. yeah even in your personal life mm -hmm. you can be an activist also absolutely so talk about it talking about it mm -hmm. honestly it's just it'll bring so much more attention to it that is there's something lacking yeah in this judicial system so mm -hmm. yeah yeah right mm -hmm. and i think so you both mentioned amazing points about breaking the stigma surrounding sexual violence and i think that's one of the main goals of tedx or mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. is really to create that conversation and a safe space for everyone in the community to, you know, even if you're not a survivor of sexual violence, to just support those who are. Mm -hmm. And I think it's an incredibly important organization. Thank you both so much for your time. Thank you. And it's a pleasure. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> Thank you. And I will leave um, a link in the article for those who wish to donate to support CADEX and some information, additional information um, about the organization as well will be available. So thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank, thank you. It was you. really a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. This has been Hannah Johnston for the West Island News.